Hi everyone, I'm Sam and welcome to The Shigley Stitch. Hi everyone, I'm Sam and I'm based in Central Scotland where I live with my partner and our dachshund Poppy. Um, so this is not going to be a normal episode, this is actually going to be a look at my five most worn knits. So I've been knitting for quite a while, um, well, since I was like 10 or something, so quite a long time. And um, I thought it would be interesting to take a look back in my wardrobe and see what I actually wear the most, because I seem to be knitting constantly, but do I actually wear all those things I've made? I've made a lot of gifts. Um, so I think looking at your wardrobe and seeing, um, kind of analyzing what you do wear the most um, can be a really useful and informative way to decide what you should work on in the future. Um, so without further ado, let's get started. So these are not going to be in um, any particular order. These are the five things that I just do wear the most. Um, and I will start out with uh, the oldest item. So the, old, the first thing that I wear, um, certainly on a weekly basis, um, almost a daily basis in the winter, is this hat. So this is the sock head slouch hat. And if you watched my first podcast episode, you might have heard me say that I'm um, making a new hat to replace this, the Muscle Burra by Isolde. Um, but this is the sock head slouch. There's nothing wrong with the pattern and there's nothing wrong with the hat. Like it's a really great neutral. Um, it fits fine. Like there's nothing wrong with it. Um, I made this back in, I think like 2015 when I was first coming to Scotland to do study abroad. That's how I originally got over here. Um, maybe go into that story in some other date. But yeah, when I was first coming over here, I was like, I really want a hat that I've made myself to keep me warm because I knew I would need a hat. Um, so I made this. And like I say, great neutral, great color. The only problem is, so I think it's made of a wool alpaca and maybe a bit of mohair blend, or there's something in it that has these like kind of really long fibers. Um, you can't really tell when it's on hugely. I mean, if you look closely, you can kind of see some fuzzy bits sticking out. And after a little while of wearing it, I just get a really itchy forehead. Um, so by the end of a walk or whatever, I'm itching my forehead and I'm kind of tired of that happening. Um, so that's why I'm currently working on a replacement. But, um, it's generally like a good hat and a good pattern. It's a, just a very basic bottle up pattern. You knit a lot of ribbing and then you decrease at the top, not in any fancy way, just in like a knit 10 stitches, then knit two together, knit, knit around, knit nine stitches, knit two together, etc., etc. So it's not like got any kind of fancy decreases or anything like that, um, but it just, it just really does the job. And I think one of the things that this tells me um, about my knits is that I should knit more good basics and I think this is going to be a theme <laughs> throughout this episode um because I just wear the basics constantly like I, I have occasionally knit other hats but I always go back to this one because it's lightweight I can um just shove it in a pocket like it fits in my jacket pocket so it's not like a super bulky this is a finger in weight pattern um it is um as I say neutral so I can wear it with literally anything it doesn't matter um and it is warm enough. Like, I think the alpaca does help it be quite cozy, um, which is a good thing. Um, but yeah, the only drawback being that kind of like fiber sensitivity, I think. So yeah, um, I mean, what is that? Like eight years and going strong? <laughs> that's, that's quite good. Um, so that is the first thing I wear the most is just this basic gray black hat. Um, the second thing that I wear all the time is the uh, Ripken cowl by Melanie Berg. And this is what it looks like. So I, it's a really, really long cowl. And I tend to wear it like this, wrapped up tight around my neck. Um, you could obviously kind of wear it more like that if you're looking for more of a, don't know, fashion statement, <laughs> she says. 
not knowing anything about fashion. Um, <laughs> I tend to wear it like this, um, as, um, just like right under my coat. So the good thing about this uh, is basically I can wrap it up tight. There's no ends. Um, it, um, is nice and warm. It doesn't let any air in. Like it's right up close to my neck and it's not overly bulky again. So again, this is kind of really a case of like practicality. Um, I knit this in, it's a, um, it's a finger in weight pattern and this, uh, the gray is hedgehog, hedgehog fibers, skinny singles in cinder and the, um, kind of beige is Triskelion Branwin four ply in oat. Um, and those are both yarns that I got at the Edinburgh Yarn Festival. Um, and again, this is like a 2016 pattern. So I got these, um, I think when I was over here still doing study abroad, um, it kind of aligned with the Edinburgh Yarn Festival. And I wouldn't necessarily put these colors together. Like it's not necessarily my most favorite color combination. Um, I think it was a case of, oh, these go together well enough. And I was looking for something to make. Um, I think I maybe only had one skein of this, uh, the brand one, because it's, uh, it was a 50% wool, 50% silk, so it would have been quite an, um, expensive yarn, but it's really lovely. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't necessarily put these colors together again, although on camera they actually look alright, and I don't dislike them, but I would probably normally put the grey with, like, a darker grey, or a black, that sounds quite boring. Um, well, yeah, the reason I wear this all the time is, again, kind of practicality, like the hat. Like, it's a neutral, it goes with everything. Um, uh, again, it tucks up nicely under my jacket. Um, it's just, it, it does what I need it to do, <laughs> which I think is the crucial thing. Um, I have made some other cowls, like I shared one on my first podcast as well, um, that, but it doesn't, um, sometimes they don't sit up quite close enough to your neck to keep the wind out, and I really need something like that. So, um, yeah, that's why I tend to wear this. As far as construction of this pattern goes, it's, um, a fairly simple one. So you start, uh, with a provisional cast on, and then the way you make these kind of, uh, the diagonal pattern is on every row you're, um, decreasing at one end and increasing at the other. So you're kind of knitting on the bias, um, round and round and round. So you just knit for ages and you add this kind of stripe pattern in. Um, and then at the end you, um, again do a Kitchener, um, graft somewhere. I can definitely find it, like, it's not that, it's not that invisible, but it's pretty invisible, so yeah, um, and there's just a small garter stitch bit at the side, um, that mostly keeps it from rolling, it maybe folds over, but, um, I think it's a really nice pattern, um, it's a really good basic, again, we're seeing a theme already of basics. <laughs> um, the yarn has pulled up a little bit, but that's pretty much to be expected given that I've worn it really regularly since uh, 2016. So what's that, seven years? <laughs> I mean, it's lasted. It, I, if I give it just a little bit of a shave with my, um, the pill shaver, the bobble shaver, um, thing I've got, um, it'll clean it right up. So yeah, this is another one. I would maybe consider, I maybe wouldn't knit this exact pattern again. I think it was designed, um, specifically for, like, those kind of really nice, um, skeins of maybe, like, cashmere or, like, um, one-off yarns, um, that are really quite precious. I, I'm sure the designer, um, designed it for, like, a cashmere yarn, so that would be really nice as well, like, right up close to your neck. Um, so yeah, that is why this is another one of my most worn, um, projects. Um, the next one is a more recent make. So, this is the Wardy cardigan. I will put up a picture of me wearing it. Um, this is a pattern by Isolde, um, who is a Scottish designer that I very... I, I just love all of her, a lot of her patterns, especially her garment patterns. And a lot of you will probably have heard of her for the muscle bra hat. Um, she has a lot of really good top-down hats. Um, but her garments are just really good basics. They're really thoughtfully constructed. Um, and yeah, I, I go back to her 
again, she doesn't have quite as many as some other like big popular designers um, who just crank them out. But when she does put them out, she, there's a lot of thought in them. So the Warty cardigan is um, kind of your classic um, long line kind of v-neck cardigan. Um, so it is knit flat, which I know some people won't like, but the reason for that is because it's got this really cool pocket construction. So pockets here. So this is the front panel and look, my hand goes all the way in. Like, look how good those pockets are. Um, and you basically knit like a double layer. Um, that looks really seamless. You can't even see on camera. Um, and I think that she says in the pattern notes that that's part of the reason uh, pocket, um, that that is, that's part of the reason that it's knit flat. But I actually didn't mind, like, once you get over seaming and see it, uh, seeing it as such a, like, a stumbling block, actually adds a lot of structure to your, to your creations, uh, to your knitwear. Um, so, I mean, I didn't really mind. Um, it's also knit kind of like a looser, so this is knit in Rauma Finnell, um, in the color 400, so, um, and I would say it's like a heavy fingering to light sport weight. The gauge is quite loose, like, I was surprised by how loose it was when I first started knitting it. You can kind of see, like, my hand, like, through it, but it actually makes for a really good sweater that you can just throw on, and also the yarn, um, like it's it's suitable for a lot of temperatures and um yeah it was also I thought the yarn was a bit rough when I first was knitting with it but I would definitely say it softens up I mean I think you can tell how much I wear this because I mean I made a white sweater and it's definitely looking a little bit like it needs a wash in some places because I wear it a lot so some of those places that you get kind of wear it would show wear like around the cuffs you can definitely see it but anyways yeah it's fully seamed so everything is knit flat including the sleeves um but it's really not that bad <laughs> i don't know what else to say it's got some lovely details at the back as well um so the way that the the shoulders are shaped is kind of it's like a set in shoulder kind of like a saddle shoulder um I'll look up exactly how she describes it but I just think the construction is all just really like cool <laughs> I don't know how else to describe it it's got a split hem as well which is a lovely detail um and the um Oh yes, this is another interesting thing, which I'm sure some people won't love, but I think it's a really great detail again. It's a, a sewn on um, ribbed uh, button band. So this makes for a really, really neat finish if you don't wanna knit the, pick up and knit the button band perpendicular to your stitches, if you want it to kind of blend in more. Um, this one by one ribbed button band is um, honestly just brilliant. Um, again, it calls it means that there's more seaming, but it also means your button band kind of uh, wraps all the way around. Uh, this has kind of been one of the patterns that has made me think, oh, seamed seamed items, not really that bad. Um, and I wear this constantly. And again, this is um, another thing that shows me that looking in your wardrobe for what you where you have gaps or what um, things you already wear is a really good way to decide how to make. Um, like what project to make next because I already had a cardigan that was similar to this a little bit longer and it wasn't wool it was like a cotton whatever blend or something from Old Navy um and I just wanted something that was going to be like fit under my jackets more it wasn't quite as long but was going to kind of fulfill the same role in my wardrobe but it was going to be something that I made and sure enough when I made this like it does all those things I it, probably is the thing I wear the most because I feel like I can wear it with pretty much anything. Um, I actually have yarn to make a version in grey because that also um, would be a colour that would fit in with my wardrobe quite well. So yeah, I'm really happy with this. I was pretty proud when I was done with it. Um, it was a, like obviously a lot of work seaming up all those things and whatnot, but I don't know, it's all part of the process, isn't it? <laughs> and if you can kind of look at it as just like, oh, getting to do more things that I enjoy. I don't mind seaming as much as like sewing and ends, 
um, seaming and doing mattress stitch is actually not too, too bad. Um, so yeah, that's one that I'm uh, definitely quite proud of and I wear a lot. So the next one is the Carbeth Cardigan by Kate Davies. Um, there we go. Um, and I'll put in a better picture, obviously. So I knit this in 2018. I think I've been a knit along that I'd seen a lot of on Instagram um, for the Carbeth pullover, which I didn't love how it looked. It has this kind of like big roll neck, a really kind of exaggerated raglan, um, which this has some elements of, like there's still kind of a roll neck part here and the raglan stitches are still, they come out, they kind of pop out, you can see it more on the back. How those raglan stitches stand out. Um, and they come together at a point. Um, so uh, when I saw that she had released her Carbeth cardigan, um, I decided to make that instead. Um, and I wear this all the time, and but it's not something I would make again. Whereas the previous, the Warty cardigan, is something I wear all the time and plan to make again. And the issue is, is this collar, which is like one of the distinguishing, you know, one of the distinguishing, distinguishing elements of the pattern, but like, that's just awkward. I don't know. I don't love how it looks on. I find it looks a bit weird. Mine doesn't, like in the pattern, it stands up like a lot, um, kind of away from the body and up more. I don't know. Um, you'll see in the pictures. Whereas on me, it doesn't. It kind of sits down more. And I think that's maybe due to yarn choice. Um, but I think yarn choice is also partly why I wear this <laughs> jumper so much, wear this cardigan so much. Um, so I use Durerum Natura um, Serrano, pretend, um, I'm sure that's pronounced differently, but, um, which is a French non-super wash, I think wool and spun uh, merino wool. So it's really lovely and kind of like airy, um, like it's not, it's a fairly, heavy but it could have been a lot heavier depending like if I'd used a different um like a worsted spun yarn um and it's a I think heavy Aran weight um so it knit up really fast because it is quite a thick yarn that you use and it's a really cozy sweater so as far as like it keeps me warm it does it does a really good job in that way um but I just don't love the collar situation it doesn't it doesn't make me feel like polished um so I probably wouldn't make it again but it's definitely a good one for like around the house and whatnot it also adds um it's got these like folded over cuffs which I could have omitted but I didn't so it adds a lot of bulk right at your cuffs which is a bit annoying if you've got maybe gloves on um and then also a jacket um it just kind of ends up being really thick because it is quite a thick yarn um so yeah I wear it all the time I think because it's gray and goes with a lot and it's actually this is the color, uh, I bought this color of yarn and then in Ulysse, uh, Ulysse, yeah, um, like the same yarn in a lighter weight to make my next version of, um, of the Warty because it's a nice really kind of charcoal gray that goes with everything, um, but yeah, I just, it's not something that I think like finishes off an outfit exactly how I would want to. Um, the original pattern also calls for this like I cord edging on the on the ribbing, um, which I really didn't like because like the buttonholes. What I've done with buttonholes is I've just like done the ribbing and put put the buttonholes like in the ribbing like you normally would. Um, but the pattern calls for you to put I cord on the edge and for the buttons to kind of go between the edge of the ribbing and the I cord, which makes like, you know when you button a cardigan and it doesn't quite fit and it just does that thing where it pulls? Like, I I didn't, like, like, you know when a cardigan's, like, fastened like that, like, it pulls out. It, it like, the original design did that on purpose and I didn't really love how that looked. Um, so I didn't do it that way. <laughs> um... Uh, I still think it turned out all right. It doesn't button all the way at the top, which is the only uh, drawback of doing it. I, I realized why she did it, why she constructed it that way. And it's down to like 
how the ribbing all comes together at the top and on the um, button band. Um, but yeah, I didn't love that look. So I wouldn't make it again, but I would definitely make something with this weight um, and with this yarn again, because I think it's really nice and it's really cozy. Um, and I do love a non-super wash. Um, so it's not like I'm gonna undo it. It's still great for around the house and whatnot. And occasionally I wear it out, but it's mostly just like a really good work from home sweater that keeps me warm, um, especially in Scottish winters. Um, okay, my last most worn thing is um, a pullover, and this is the Ravello pullover by Isabel Kramer. And this is like slightly wacky colors to what I would actually normally wear. Um, but yes, so the Ravello pullover by Isabel Kramer. It's again just a simple raglan. Um, the pattern is written with these stripes in it, so I was looking for a way to use up like a lot of uh, different colors of yarn. So I had this like speckly yarn that, and this contrast kind of pale color does have these um, kind of teal and orange pops of color in it, which is why I chose these colors to go with it. Um, so yeah, I mainly made this to use up yarn, to figure out a way to use up some yarn. Um, this is a really lovely like uh, I want to say it's like merino cashmere or something. It's a really soft blend. Um, and it was like a one-off kind of special skein that I had. Um, and the rest is mostly scraps. I think I made like a Highland Cow <laughs> like toy. I think that's what these orangey colors are left over from. Um, so there's a few different actually scraps in here that are all kind of a similar rust color. Um, so I think there's actually like three different rust colored yarns in this thing but between the stripes and then like you can kind of fade them together you mostly can't tell um and then at the bottom is mostly one skein of yarn until i got to the very bottom i was clearly gonna run out so it's got like i think it's like maybe a isigard yarn that i picked up when i was in denmark briefly but i made this like 2017 maybe um there's nothing wrong with the pattern. The pattern's a good basic raglan pattern. I even like, I do like the stripes. I like making stripey jumpers. I wouldn't choose these colors on purpose if I was buying yarn to make a sweater. Like I made it just because I wanted to use up yarn. But the reason that it gets worn so much is because it's comfy. It's like super, super um, soft. It's mostly all super wash wool of some kind. Um, so it basically just feels like you're throwing a sweatshirt on. Yeah, so it's super soft. Um, there's not much to say about the construction of the pattern because it's just a top-down raglan. Like, you start from the top, do the raglan, do the body, do the sleeves. I think it called for like maybe a rolled neck edge. I put on a small, um, like a small bed of ribbing. Um, yeah, it's it's a well-written pattern, but it's it's quite simple. Um, yeah, so the reason I wear this all the time is because I'm not, like, precious about it. Like, I don't really mind wearing it out and about going on walks and stuff. And it's really cozy, um, and really soft. So, because it's super washed, it's quite drapey and, um, like, I can wear it next to the skin. I don't need to wear anything under it. Um, I could pet it because there's, like, I'm sure there's some cashmere in this yarn. Um, so it's basically just because it's easy to wear and it's comfy. Um, so that is certainly something to keep in mind. So I think what I've taken away from this exercise of looking at my most worn items is that um, I will wear things more often if they fill a gap in my wardrobe or if they're like a really good basic. Um, yeah, it just makes me think that I need to make some more basics, to be honest. Um, I also have a small list of things that um, I feel like are missing in my wardrobe, so that might be on my next, like, I might start to look through some of those ideas and see where I have gaps and where I want to fill them in. I already know that I want to make a grey version of that cardigan, uh, of the Wardy cardigan, and I know I want to make some kind of, like, more voluminous cardigan, because a lot of my, um, I've just said cardigan way too many times, a lot of my cardigans are a little bit closer fitting and I would like to have something that's kind of a little bit more yes, oversized and um, 
cozy. Uh, so yeah, really looking at those gaps and what, what I wish I had when I was picking out what clothes to wear for the day and then paying attention to that and making something to fill those gaps. I think that's the way to go for me instead of looking at what's maybe a new pattern that I really love um, but am I actually going to wear it or don't just pay attention to like what's popular and what other people are making, paying attention to what um, what I actually need. <laughs> Sounds simple but it's easy to get caught up in like ooh that pattern looks really cool but am I actually going to wear it once I've made it. Um, that's something that kind of is percolating in the back of my mind. Um, so I hope that was interesting. Um, I hope that um, gave you something to think about. Uh, perhaps let me know what your most worn patterns are um, or your most worn knits are. It's always interesting to see what people are actually wearing all the time as opposed to what they've made but you never know like do they make that and never wear it or is it something that is in regular rotation in their wardrobe? Um, yeah it's always really interesting to see. Um, if you like that this um, please feel free to like, subscribe, share, comment, etc. Um, it would really mean a lot to me. Um, as I keep making these videos. So, see you next time.